Welcome to Just Curious Media. This is Let's Talk Cobra Kai. I'm Jason Connell. And I'm Sal Rodriguez. All right, Sal. We are back for another episode. Special episode, a fun episode, all of the above. A very special episode. Very special. A very special I'm- I love the word back. I'm always happy to be back. Yeah. I really am always happy Me to be back. Too. You know what? You, you and I were talking earlier today about momentum, how much we mm-hmm. love momentum. We do. We do. And we lost it. But we're back. <laughs> we are back. So today, I wanted to revisit a subject that we've covered before with a twist. So back on episode 76, we did a very, very fun, also, special episode entitled Daniel LaRusso's First Friend, Freddy Fernandez. I loved the Fs. Very playful. We delved into all things Freddy Fernandez from the original Karate Kid. It was released October 29th, yeah. 2021. So very fitting, almost two wow. years ago. Wow. You know, and almost a Halloween episode in itself. Yeah. But here is a description from that episode, straight from it, just so we can give our fans more insight. Jason Connell and Sal Rodriguez discuss the on and off friendship between Daniel LaRusso and Freddy Fernandez, fellow Sal C's neighbor, schoolmate from The Karate Kid. Now, I love the on and off friendship I just did, because if you recall the movie, and if you don't recall, go watch it again. It's always worth watching. But Freddy is literally the first person Daniel meets in the movie. And they're fast friends, and he invites him to a cookout the following day. And then once Daniel gets beaten up by... Johnny Lawrence. Johnny Lawrence and the Cobra oh, Kaiser wait, there. This this goes back to thinking that did... I, I know we re, we visited this at one point in time. Yeah. Did Freddie kind of set Daniel up? No, I mean, that's getting into the minutia of it all. No, he actually encouraged him to talk to Allie. So not... My point is, do you think, was, was Freddie a legitimate friend or was he trying to set up Daniel to kind of uh, fight his battles for him? Well, I think he is the title of this new episode which is Daniel LaRusso's fair-weather friend, Freddy Fernandez. Yes. So I think he's just more fair-weather, hey, mm. things are great, okay. oh, things are bad. So what happens is Daniel gets beaten up by Johnny, as you just said. Okay. Freddy is encouraging him till he loses the fight, and then they just leave Daniel at Leo Carrillo Beach, and he's got to find his way home pre-Uber, and he's got mm. no money, and it probably took him forever to get home. And we see Freddie the next day at the first day of school and they're all playing soccer and he coined the term, Hey, the karate kid. So he did do that. And then he leaves again and comes back at the all Valley to hoist Daniel up and celebrate him. Very fair weather. I would say, uh, so yeah, that's, so this is why we wanted to do that episode. Cause we actually went beat by beat all of Freddie's, you know, appearances in the movie. This was not that, but before I go on, please, anything you want to add? No, I mean, I, I really know. You know I, I've never thought so much about Freddie until you came into my life. Um, <laughs> yeah. Where was he Nobody the whole did. time? Where yeah. was Freddie from that, that beach scene? Or the school scene uh, the, to the, the All scene. Valley. Yeah. Where they, the heck they was went he? to, They went to the same school. Why wouldn't... Right? Uh, they lived in... in the South Seas apartments together. Well, okay, that, that reminds me of, a, of what a friend told me. I have a friend that went to Taft High School in the mid-'80s. Yeah. Yeah. And he was talking about how revered Taft was in the, in the mid-'80s. So when you and I talked about, like, what school were they supposed to have gone to or what school were they trying to mimic, yeah. I would definitely say at this time... Definitively, I think they were trying to mimic Taft High School at, at the time. So, yeah, Freddie, Allie, Johnny, Daniel, all at Taft High School, I think. Okay. So, now, before we go further, because what brought this on our radar, Freddie Fernandez is, brilliant, is brilliantly played by Israel Huarbe. He's amazing in the movie. And, Sal, I know we've talked about him on that episode. We went through his IMDb but this guy was a heavy hitter back in the 80s. He was on a roll. 
And I've often said before that Sal Rodriguez could have been Freddy Fernandez is, had casting been, you know, swung your way and you were the right age. You easily could have been this role. But Israel plays it great. And you go back to his IMDb and it's like he's on shows like Remington Steel. OK, Hill Street Blues. We talked about that. He played Paco on one episode and Diablo Kid on another episode. So he he played two different characters over the course of that run. He was on Give Me a Break. Oh, that's cool. I'd like to see that one. Exactly. And then the Karate Kid. Oh, that was leading up to the Karate Kid. Leading okay, up to got it. it. But that's wow. not all. Beverly Hills Cop. He plays a room service waiter. I watched that movie recently and there he is. He's the one who comes out and like Axel was sending him out to the cops, Taggart and them following him in front of the hotel and running the room service out to the car on a stakeout. And it's like, wait, is that? And it's him. It's Freddy Fernandez. Then he was on Night Court. He was on Trapper John M.D. Silver Spoons. The movie Overboard. I revisited that movie recently, the Kurt Russell movie. Right. And oh, yeah. uh, he's what's that? Can you hear me? Kurt Russell and Goldie Hawn. Yeah. Kurt, yeah. The Kurt Russell, Goldie Hawn movie. He plays a yacht engine room crewman. And I'm watching it going, is that. So it's like he's that guy that if you recognize him, it's him. And then you bring up your phone. It's like, mm. oh, my gosh. He was in so many things and not stopping there. Falcon Crest, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Indecent Proposal, one of my favorites, such a good movie. Angels in the Outfield, The Net, Dear God, Boogie Nights. So what? it's like he was Boogie on. Nights? Hang on, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I did not know Freddie Fernandez was in Boogie Nights. Early on, he plays Mauricio's <laughs> brother. I know he's in that like tracking shot in the very wow. beginning. So, I mean, just he plays Louis uh, Guzman's brother. So, you know, he's really had a run, but. I always felt he needed more screen time in this movie, but that does not change the fact that he's a fair weather friend. Now, had he had more screen time, maybe we could have flushed out that friendship more and he wouldn't be a fair weather friend. But Mr. Miyagi became his best friend and mentor. And then there's Allie. So there probably just wasn't room to keep working Freddie in, man. So they brought him in the beginning sprinkled him in and they brought him back at the end which is hilarious they didn't even have to bring him back at the end but the fact that they did really solidifies the fair weather side of it jason i really have to wonder why mr miyagi and freddie fernandez didn't have any sort of relationship or, or well, mentorship or tutelage did they or at least he definitely knows him he's the handyman maintenance man at the south seas apartment he, he's been there for a while right i don't know what apartment he's in but maybe he was in the one that burned down that you went and checked on that one day. We don't know. So much to speculate. You know, I, so much speculation. Like, I'm imagining maybe Freddie did meet Miyagi. Maybe Miyagi did try to teach him karate. But Freddie was just like, yeah, like maybe disinterested. Although he did say, I want to learn karate. But the only reason Miyagi taught Daniel is because he was getting bullied and hurt. Mm -hmm. That was it. He didn't want to teach anybody. So Freddie probably didn't have you know, a strong enough why for Mr. Miyagi. He's like, ah, Freddie, this kid. So, Jason, that makes me wonder then, did the Cobra Kai and Johnny Lawrence, did they go around bullying people or they just had a conflict with Daniel? A little bit of both. I'm sure was they threw Freddie kids Fernandez, in lockers. Was Freddie bullied. Fernandez bullied by Cobra Kai? He could have been. Maybe that's why he wanted to learn karate or he was impressed with Daniel's kick. Mm. right? Maybe. Yeah. Our people at school, you know, it's one of those things where Cobra Kai was probably known at the school and like, oh yeah, that's that karate crew. They're always winning tournaments because Johnny by that point in time was a two-time champ. Mm. Word gets around school. So the cool kids do karate, right? But they don't just take anybody, but they took Lamar from Revenge of the Nerds. So why not? Why not Israel? Why are they? <laughs> yeah, they'll take Lamar from Revenge, Revenge of the Nerds, but not Freddie Fernandez. What's going on? Yeah. Well, we don't know. We don't know. If he, he didn't have the money. So what brought this to mind to do this kind of second episode, second installment of the Freddie Fernandez was the fact that on episode 154, which is not released, while you know it is not currently released as we do this recording but soon will be episode 154 is the karate kid 1984 audio description 
audio description. I actually listened to the Karate Kid with the audio description on, which is that you hear all the dialogue and the score and everything normal in a movie with someone coming in every once in a while intermittently and just telling you things that you would need if you're not overly familiar. It was fascinating. I want to save it for that episode. But during that experience, some things really came to light for me. And it made me think of while we were doing that episode, you and I were, we collectively coined the phrase Fair Weather Freddy. Yeah. Hmm? So it's, I think it's a good term. Yes. And so I also think that if we use it enough, maybe Freddy takes on kind of a a Karen pejorative term, <laughs> which uh, for those unaware, please give us the definition of a Karen. I love the idea of coining a new term and then you can explain how it, it could make sense. So yeah, it yeah. could make sense. We could have Freddie in the cultural lexicon because Karen is there. Karen is a pejorative term used as slang for a middle-class white woman who is perceived as entitled or demanding beyond the scope of what is normal. The term is often portrayed in memes depicting middle-class white women who have class privilege to demand their own way. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. I think at this point in time, a lot of people are very familiar with the term Karen. And yep. you know what? Freddy, well, there could be a Freddy term. Yeah. It, and it's not as negative. It's just a fair weather person. And listen, well, a, fa I, a fair weather friend is not like a bad. They're not a bad no. person. You just got to know. Yeah, they're very much like they're, they're not going to be those through and through type of friends. No, Freddy is a perfect role model for this. He shows up likes him, invites him, he gets beat up. Ah, I don't have time for this. And then now he's a karate champ. He's proud of him again. This is the, you know, the encyclopedia of fair weather. This, we've seen it here. Now, maybe Avildsen had him in more scenes than it got cut, and that's why we see this version of Freddy. But I think we need to bring him back. So I'm going to show you a couple photos real fast. This is Freddy in action. If you can see this, this is very early on in the movie. I have Daniel. And Freddy, and Freddy's wearing the Make and Bacon t-shirt, oh, which yes. is classic. Make and Bacon, yeah. I think later on he started selling those, I a version of those Make and Bacon shirts. As he shirts. should, as he yeah. should. Now, this was the fight at the beach. Freddy's right here, trying to help Daniel up. And then Daniel, of course, gets bested. And then Daniel's upset. He's embarrassed. He doesn't even want to talk to Allie, because it would be embarrassing. And then this is the Freddy that you get next. You get the disappointment freddy and this is when he leaves and they we don't see him till the next day and then we don't see him for the rest of the movie right and in fact we barely see him at the tournament at the end of the movie until i think there's a revelation for you here this is an what? easter egg in cobra kai what in cobra kai season two episode seven lol like a little low point a lol there is a scene when Daniel is preparing his students with some new training methods of them in a freezer. Remember that? It was cold and they were all training. Mm -hmm. And in the background, this is a screenshot from that scene. In the background, there are some packages. And it says, clearly says, Fernandez Meat Company. What? <laughs> nice. Right? Fernandez right Meat Company, which makes total sense because who else is going to let Daniel come and, what, punch, almost like Rocky style, go in there, punch their beef, yeah. so to speak? Yep. Who else would let them do that? One Freddy Fernandez, oh, I'm telling God. you. Yeah. The uh, make and bacon guy makes good on this and, and opens a meat company or the family company. Wow. And maybe they remain friends for all these years. We don't know. So I, if we're never going to get Freddy, this was a little Easter egg in this episode. Lol. And I don't think it's enough. But I knew about this a few seasons ago, but now was the time to talk about it. And other people have seen this as well. It's not just me, but it's definitely highlighting, like, this might be all we get, but Cobra Kai did remember Freddy. But again, he is a fair-weather friend. So, But this show's all about fixing the past, right? You know, revisionist history. It would have been a great opportunity, and still may, 
season six still may have Freddy in some scene. If this really was his company, maybe there's just a quick exchange between them. In fact, I don't know why they didn't have one in this episode. It could have been a throwaway. They could. Hey, have. thanks, Freddy. We're going to lock up Something later. Quick. Appreciate the place. Right. That was your moment. Now, maybe Israel didn't want to do it. What? I don't know. Why I, wouldn't I he want to do it? I'm speculating. Or they He's did still it acting. cut it. He's still acting. He's still today. acting. So I think it needs to be done. Something. But there you have it. I like the Easter egg. I like the tip of the hat. I did not know about this. I missed Fernandez Meat Company. I wow. absolutely missed that. Uh, yeah, they could have done. You know what? What television shows and movies will do sometimes, like what they could, what they could have done is they could have had you know the the Miyagi Do students, and then they say, "Hey, thanks, Freddie," and then you get that single yep. shot of Freddie, and you totally. can tell like he wasn't even in the same room. Yeah, he's somewhere else. It's yeah. like that commercial with uh, Johnny that the Buffalo Wild Wings. Yes, like, was exactly. he really with those guys? No. Yeah, could have been that, could have been that. Threw him the keys, catches mm-hmm. the keys. Were they in the same shot? Or they could have high-fived and hugged or something. Or, or, Freddy walks in, or Freddy kicks the freezer door open, pulling, ah! a, pulling a Daniel, and it hits Daniel. <laughs> like, you know, that... just bring it around. Oh, my God. They need that would have been fantastic. They need you on staff. <laughs> I know, man. That would have been so great. No, I love tips of the hat. I love Easter eggs. And I, yeah, but I do think, yeah, maybe there was, if you're going to go so far as to have Fernandez Meat Company, you're going to have them training there. You could have had a brief little scene given Israel a little bit of camera time. Yeah. You you could have done it. Yeah. I wonder why they didn't do it. I know. Yeah. It's complicated. And and I'm having fun. We're having fun with the fair weather aspect because we used to just call him first friend because I was like thinking of the F's, but seeing the movie again, listening. To the movie again really made me think and it's true it's not israel's performance he's fantastic it's the character the character freddie fernandez absolutely without a doubt unequivocally ask israel as well he's a fair weather friend yeah. no doubt about it and i would love to see his presence somehow in cobra kai or spinoffs or if he just just have him enter frame but I do think he's a pivotal character because we meet him so early and we're still trying to learn who Daniel is, right? And he also coined the phrase, the karate kid. Let's give him credit. In fact, he should have that on shirts because it was Freddie's character, making bacon, you know, blah, blah, something karate kid. But that leads me to my last part, the last part of this episode. Which is really interesting. And uh, we'll be talking about this much, much more on other episodes. But this is a teaser. Mm -hmm. Let's Talk Cobra Kai is developing, it's in development, some sort of book. And this is Mm -hmm. just going to be a teaser. And we're going to talk about this a lot more later. But this is just three paragraphs from this section of the book, which is still being developed but called Dissecting the Characters of the Karate Kid. And the reason I want to just highlight this is, A, show you kind of behind the curtain what we're working on, and B, it illuminates Freddy Fernandez's character in this early section. So we'll tell you a lot more about how this came to be, but it really is us working with this new company and them working with our transcripts. and It's fascinating, and we can't wait to it until it becomes a reality but let us just read these few paragraphs to give you a taste i'll start you'll jump in and i'll finish off here we go it's more like a novel like a book it's not a transcript let's turn our attention to the film's main character daniel larusso his mother's optimism about their move from new jersey to california starkly contrasts his teenage grumpiness You might even find yourself not warming up to him immediately, just like Sal did. (laughs) Despite his mother's efforts to relocate for a new job, Daniel's discontent is palpable. Our introduction to Daniel isn't particularly endearing. In fact, the first time we meet him, he's kicking open the door to his new apartment, inadvertently knocking over a kid named Freddy. Surprisingly, instead of holding a grudge, Freddy immediately befriends him, even inviting him to a local cookout. Just like that, Daniel, the seemingly ungrateful kid, starts to grow on us. See, Sal? Pivotal. Last part. 
But it's not just Freddy's unexpected friendship that starts to redeem Daniel in our eyes. His thoughtful gesture of bringing water for an old lady's dog shows us a softer side to his character. Maybe the long road trip had taken its toll, making him grumpy. Or perhaps, just like any teenager, he was dealing with the mixed emotions of moving to a new place and leaving his old life behind. So that is kind of the style. It's fascinating. We will delve into this. But it is told. like It's our podcast being re-examined, retold as a narrative. And sometimes our names will pop up in there. But I wanted us to pull this out because, A, we're still learning it and working with it and wrapping our heads around it, this whole thing. It's so much fun. Every episode is like this. But Freddy Fernandez is highlighted here. And it is an opportunity for us, the audience, to say, oh, yeah, this guy's likable. And so Freddie plays a role. They needed somebody. You can't meet Allie out of the gate. You can't meet Mr. Miyagi too soon and their buddy-buddy. They needed a device, and Freddie was that device. And then they just kind of discarded him. <laughs> well, you know, you and I have talked about that as far as that, that uh, pattern. But as far as he needed a way to get to the beach, right? He totally. needed someone to get yes. him there. He needed and a that device. was really yeah. the only option at that point was we needed someone to, we need some way to get him to the beach. Yeah, but they could trusts. have used another device, right? They could have used another device to get they him to the could beach. Have. He could have just went to the beach. Ah, you know, Daniel, I'll unpack, I'll drop you off at the beach, and then he stumbles on things. But they wanted to kind of, you know, see him warming up to someone else, his own age or close to it. So it's fantastic. So again. This just points out how important Freddy Fernandez is in the Karate Kid universe and beyond. And I hope we actually see Freddy Fernandez and we don't just have to settle for Fernandez Meat Company, which is cool. But I want a little bit more. A little bit more. No, I agree. I, I think it's really cool. I love that Easter egg. I'm very happy to talk about it. But yeah, it gets me thinking, well, if you're going to go that far, if you're already going to go there, I'm one of these people like, well, since we're here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Since well, since, since they're there, might as well go a little bit further. And we maybe one day, maybe. I mean, I haven't lost hope that season six is going to tie up every loose end imaginable. Shows usually do when they're season finales or series finales. You know, let, let's pick out one of our favorite. I was on the season finale of season four of Six Feet Under, my only acting credit. And it was great. But when Six Feet Under did its series finale, that's how you tie it all up. Without, well, maybe they'll make a movie. No, no, if you ever see it, I highly recommend it. Just that last sequence will make you cry, no doubt. It will bring tears to your eyes. It's very moving. But you see people, and their life is played out before your eyes, each character. It's fascinating. This show won't do that, but they could tie it up nicely. When I was watching the Downton Abbey series finale, now there's been two movies, subsequent movies after that, but I was watching it sound, I didn't realize it was the series finale. And I was like, boy, they're really buttoning this thing up. Like, wow, and she's getting married. And, and I really thought it had one more season. And then, no, that's why it was so well done. And I really hope the same happens with Cobra Kai, just like you're alluding to. Well, this is something we've never visited. We, we can say, and we've experienced oh, this next season is exciting, is going to be exciting. We have no idea how they will end mm -hmm. the show because we have never experienced an ending in Cobra Kai until season six. Yeah, that's right. Exciting. It's, it's exciting. It's bittersweet, as I've said. That's absolutely the word I've been using, bittersweet. Yeah. Um, I realize it's time, but it's sad. I am sad. I am saddened by the end. Of, yeah. of a people that we've grown to love, a universe that we've learned to to love and 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 go into deeper than any other any other universe I've ever experienced, other yeah. than our actual universe that we're in, and even <laughs> then, probably not as much as the Cobra Kai Karate Kid universe. Not to mention, I don't think any other podcast is giving as much uh, no. respect and credence and airtime to Freddie Fernandez and by default Israel Huarbe. Yes. As Let's Talk Cobra Kai. I would challenge any other podcast out there. Have you yeah. given as much attention to Freddy Fernandez? I doubt it. And Israel, if you're listening, please, we would love to have you on the Let's Talk Cobra Kai podcast. And we can delve into your career, which is fascinating. 
maybe have you on the Let's Talk Movies podcast as well. But yeah. talk about the experience of making the Karate Kid. We did have one Daryl Vidal on the episode on on the sorry, we did have one Daryl Vidal on the actual podcast. He was fantastic because people told him about us doing a breakdown of Daryl Vidal. So maybe the same is true here. This is our second shout out shot across the bow for Freddie Fernandez. And that concludes Daniel LaRusso's Fairweather Friend, Freddy Fernandez, episode, volume one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> volume two. But a lot of fun, Sal. I'm sure we'll be back for more long before season six drops. Wait, hang on. Hang on, Jason. I think Uh-oh. I have a phone call. Oh, it's my friend Frank. Uh-oh. Nah, you know what? I'm not going to pick up. You know why? My friend Frank is a Fairweather Freddy. Is he? I'm not picking it up. Fairweather Frank. <laughs> yeah, yeah, another F, two Fs. So thank you so much for listening. And please be sure to subscribe to the Let's Talk Cobra Kai podcast and the Let's Talk Cobra Kai YouTube live channel. You can also really help us by giving the show a five-star rating on Apple Podcast. And for all you listeners that enjoy sharing your thoughts, you can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, send us a direct message, or post a comment on any Let's Talk Cobra Kai social media platform. We also highly recommend checking out our other podcast and visiting JustCuriousMedia.com. No mercy. Great job. Stopping audition.